Wait, don't panic. I know what you're saying. I never should have bought this stupid computer. But just before you give up on your Mac computer, I want you to try this first step. Listen, I know personally the most frustrating thing that can happen to you is you're working throughout the day and your computer is just malfunctioning or it's freezing, whatever it's doing. I'm gonna talk to you and give you some pointers on how to troubleshoot your Apple computer. So the first thing is, I guarantee you this step right here is going to fix probably 90% of what your issue is that you're having with your Mac computer. Isolate, isolate, isolate. First of all, you're probably most likely in a program or in an app on your computer or MacBook Pro. Whatever that app is or whatever that program you're using is probably most likely causing the problem. So what I want you to do is isolate the problem. We're in the program, so maybe we wanna to try to get out the program first. What I'm really saying is let's take a step back and try to isolate what exactly is going on. Take a mental note of what's happening, what you just did within the past five to 10 minutes ago that may have caused this issue. And I'm not saying you caused the issue, but the computer is doing some type of weird, you know, whatever it's doing. So what I want you to do first is get out of the program. If you're able to save whatever file you're working on, that's a good sign. That means that you, number one, you can save your file and you can retrieve it back later. Number two, it's probably not an internal problem. It's just your computer needs to be restarted. But let's go ahead and restart the program first. Let's do that. Now, if you restart the program, you get back in it and you get freeze again, maybe it's now also time to restart your entire Mac computer. But you wanna do those two things first. Try to save and then maybe restart your computer. Just give it a fresh reboot or restart. Then get back into your program. See whatever happens, see if it malfunctions again. If we're still having problems, then I've got some more solutions that I can offer you. In terms of isolation, you wanna to try to remember what was the last thing that you did that was different? Was there a new plugin? Was there a new function or something that you use or clicked on that may have caused the entire program to freeze? Did you just recently install a program? Did you recently upgrade your OS? By OS, of course, I mean operating system. Maybe even your file, it could possibly be corrupted. Don't assume just because there's an issue with your program that the overall program has an issue. I look at computer software troubleshooting just like if you were to go to the doctor with an ailment. They start small and then they kind of branch out. Do not assume just just because the program that you're using, if that's freezing, don't assume that the entire program is corrupted. So your computer has frozen. Here's one thing I would try to do. Go into, and I'm actually looking on my Apple computer because I, I don't even remember. <laughs> yeah, so what you do is you go into the Apple in the top left uh, portion of your screen. You're gonna click the Apple logo and then go down to force quit. So what force quit does, and you don't need to force quit right away, but it gives you a list of the programs that are running on your computer currently. What happens during the day is you open up a program, program number one, you work on that. You open up program number two, you work on all that. Your Apple computer, your Mac computer does not necessarily quit those programs. You have to physically quit those. So there may be a program that you're working on or that you have already worked on that you can shut down. Now, I wanna warn you, before you shut down that program, make sure you have saved all of your files, of course. Just don't go shutting down programs. And be careful that you don't shut down the program that you're currently working in. If you try this force quit method, it's gonna free up space, not only in your Mac's internal operating system, but also in the RAM. It's gonna free some of the random access memory space for your Mac to be able to focus on one program. I may have said this already, but generally speaking, just run one or two programs at the time because most of us have purchased an iMac or a MacBook or a Mac mini that has probably the basic or the starter specs. Your specs are not really the greatest. So you don't, you don't have like maxed out RAM or a maxed out hard drive or your processor is like, okay, it's like borderline average. You're working heavy intensive programs, you might wanna think about upgrading your RAM or the next Apple computer you get, upgrade your RAM, your processor, all that good stuff. That's another video. Oh my gosh, so if you have this issue with the gray screen, so what happens is you start your Apple computer up and you get a gray screen with the Apple logo. Don't, don't panic, don't panic. Um, there are a few things that we can do to kind of alleviate this. You know what, I've turned on my Mac computer and gotten this gray screen. Some people call it the screen of death. I don't, <laughs> I don't call it that, but 
because I'm hoping my Mac's okay. But I've gotten this screen and I'm not too pleased. I'm not pleased at all, simply because Mac doesn't really give you the answer. They're not telling you what's going on specifically with your screen. They're of course relying on you to be the rocket scientist to try to figure out what's going on. But short of taking it to a technician, you should be able to run in safe mode. And I'm gonna give you the instructions of how to do that. There could be a number of things that are preventing your Mac from loading up to the desktop. For whatever reason, it's staying on this gray screen. For one thing, you could have a faulty mouse that you've hooked up. AirPods could be interfering and causing this gray screen. Also, another thing is your keyboard. If you have any external hard drives that are hooked up, I've had experiences where I'm, I'm like sweating and my heart's pounding because I'm like, what's wrong with my Mac? I go to unhook all of these cords and cables out of my the back of my Mac and then it turns on. Isolation is the, is the key. I, I said it before and I'm gonna keep repeating that. So let's get into safe mode. Let me fix this screen. Okay, here we go. It's gonna be a nuisance if you find this spinning globe or if you get the gray screen. The most annoying part for me is the fact that Apple doesn't give you any type of error message. So you kind of have to figure it out and troubleshoot it yourself. As well as the other annoying part, if you get to this gray screen, more than likely, you're not gonna be able to get past it until you troubleshoot. A personal example for me is I was working on a project. I had an external hard drive hooked up to my iMac computer. What I noticed is every time I went to turn my computer back on, which is another thing you shouldn't do, don't power your computer off after every day, leave it on. So back to the story. I had this external hard drive hooked up to it and it was faulty and I was just so frustrated because this is the place where I was saving my files or doubly saving them. Well, because this hard drive or external hard drive was so faulty, it was just not working properly. I would get the gray screen and I noticed if I unhooked the, the cable to my iMac, my computer would turn on just fine. Well, you know what I did with that external hard drive. I never use it again. Oh, you know what? Let me give you one last thing. If you installed a new program or app to your computer, you wanna make sure that you're keeping track of the last few things that you've done within the last couple of days. This new program or computer app may be causing the gray screen. While this is another solution, I would wait to do this last. What you can do is restart your computer. So restart it and run it in safe mode and see if there are any updates to your operating system that you can apply. I personally, once again, I'm gonna say this, do not go and update. Let that be a last resort because I've updated my system before and then with you, when you update, it's just, it's a pain to have to go back into previous operating system that you had if you upgrade to a new system. A lot of your third-party programs that you're using they may not be compatible to this latest operating system that Apple has. If you want to use the safe mode method, I'm gonna give you directions right now that you can use to run in safe mode so you can kind of go under the hood of your iMac or MacBook computer. In order to restart in safe mode, you'll need to power down your computer. So hold the power button until your computer shuts off. When you go to turn your computer back on, make sure you're holding the shift button and then turn it on and it should pop up in safe mode for you. So safe mode is simply an option for your computer to run without having to run its applications or programs. You can safely check your system and how it's functioning and how it's performing. And of course, if there are any errors or anything going on behind the scenes. Okay, so moving forward, your Mac computer has what we call a system management controller. So this system management controller, I'm gonna call it the SMC. And depending on your issue, you should be able to simply reboot your iMac or your laptop. Now, what I'm gonna give you first is if you have the desktop or the iMac, use these set of instructions. So what you need to do is power down your Mac and then unplug your power cord. You're gonna wait about 15 seconds and then plug it back in wait five seconds and then turn on your computer. Now, if you have a MacBook computer, this is a little bit different. So the laptops are different. The first thing you wanna do is unplug your power cord to your Mac. Oh, did I tell you to power it down first? Yeah, power it down first and then unplug it. And after you've unplugged it, what you wanna do is you're gonna click on your keyboard, control shift option. I may have had it backwards. Maybe it's shift control option but click shift control option on your laptop. And then you will press the power button at the same time. Hold these for about 10 seconds, okay? And then release after the 10 seconds, reconnect your power button and then turn back on your computer. If perhaps you've exhausted all of these options and you tried them all, it may be time for you to reinstall your operating system. I always stress this, make this a last resort. But if you feel comfortable enough to restart or to reinstall, 
your operating system. I'm gonna give you directions of how to do that. So you're gonna force quit your Mac by holding down your power button for about three to five seconds. And then when you go to turn it on, you're gonna hit Command and R. This instinctively boots your Mac into recovery mode. In your Mac OS utility window, you wanna click on reinstall Mac OS. Then of course, click continue and follow the instructions the Mac computer is gonna give you in order to reinstall your operating system. You know, we've all had issues with our computers, whether it be Mac or Windows computers. This video, of course, has given you some options. However, there are other resources that you can reach out or go to concerning your issues that you have. One is supportapple.com. It's Apple's website where people send questions. This is a great reference. I typically try to Google whatever is going on wrong with my computer if I'm having issues, because I'm telling you, there are countless and countless of other people that are having the same issue. So if you go to supportapple.com, there are going to be questions and lines of questions. Finally, don't forget to ask any questions that you have. I may be able to answer them, or there may be somebody who's watching this video who has had a similar issue with their Mac computer, and you can find it in the comments. They may have the answer for you. So you may be saying to me, Brett, you know, I really want to be proactive when it comes to the maintenance of my Mac computer. And I say to you, great. That's kind of the approach that I took when I first purchased, you know, my Apple computer. I really wanted to see how can I prevent these issues so I won't have to troubleshoot. Now, you're not going to get around every little issue, but some you can prevent. So here are some tips to prevent you from having to watch a video like this again. The first tip is your desktop. Keep your folders to a minimum because this will slow your computer down and it just, over time, your Mac computer is just not gonna, it's gonna be lagging. So I try to just minimize whatever files that I have that are located on my desktop. You know, here's another tip. If you're working in more than one program, maybe try to reduce the programs that you're working in. Some programs are load intense. And what I mean by that is the program that you're working on requires a lot of attention of your Mac. So if you have other programs running in the background, go ahead and shut those down. So I promise you, if you do this and make this a habit, a daily habit, your computer is gonna thank you and you will be more efficient in your day-to-day -day work. You know, I would simply say, treat your Mac how you wanna be treated.